In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Oh my god, they have just done what in North Korea? Nah. So I'm sure you're all pretty aware of North Korea and I mean a lot of stuff goes on there. They literally convince the population that the internet doesn't exist. Everything that could possibly be Western is banned. Like you can't do anything, obviously. There's about 10 haircuts you can have. I mean the list goes on. I'm sure you all know a lot about it anyway. Now I'm sure you also know they have some pretty extreme laws on top of these things and the punishment for some of these laws is not good. Now this was a while ago but I'm only just hearing about it now so I needed to bring it to everyone's attention. A two-year-old child has been arrested for life in North Korea. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell? What could a two-year-old have done? Well, it wasn't even her. So her parents were caught holding a Bible just had a Bible in their house. The authorities caught these people with a Bible, and of course, those parents then got severely punished, with the potential of being unalive. As I say, anything Western, anything religious that isn't to do with the North Korean state is completely banned, you can't even look at it. Literally, if your house is burning down, it doesn't matter about your kids and everyone in the house, you just have to take a picture of the Kim Jong-un from the wall. Like but anyway, what's this got to do with the young girl? Well, this is where some of the rules get even worse. Basically, if you do anything wrong in North Korea, they have a three-generation system, which means three generations of your family will be punished for what you did. So there was once a guy who actually escaped North Korea into South Korea. He was absolutely fine, got out of the country. But his wife, his kids, and when his grandkids are born, will all be in jail, if not unalive. So yeah, this two-year-old girl is now serving life in prison in North Korea because her parents had a Bible. I think I'm I'm gonna give going there a miss. Honestly, hit that follow button and I'll see you in the next one. That's crazy. I am so sorry for anybody that has to live that lifestyle. That is absolutely ridiculous. I do not know if this is true, but if it is, that's just heartbreaking. Talk a little bit about the Vatican archives. In the 1920s, there's a Russian professor. His name was Gingrich Ludwig. He was able to have access to the archives. He said that there's 53 miles worth of shelving what? in the archives. He also reported that there are 35,000 catalogs, basically like books. He walked up on this one section, which was, he called it the alien section. And he came across star people Creatures. or angels or people from space yeah. coming down in craft. Like these books talked about how these star people taught all the ancient civilizations. They taught how to build the pyramids and taught the Mayans things and like all this crazy, crazy stuff. And then he writes down that these things had these weapons. And today we're like, those are nuclear weapons. <gasps> It talked about how they would use them. And I guess they used it once on Babylon and it said that this weapon that these things possessed melted the walls of Babylon with the amount of energy and heat that they produce. And I'm just like, why are they hiding this stuff? Mm. It just seems like the Roman Catholic Church is a little bit of like the gatekeepers. Yeah, they're like gatekeepy. That's what they are. This is fascinating. I'm always a huge fan of whatever the Vatican is holding because I would love to explore that even if I don't know what I'm looking at. Just let me look at the pictures because that would be enough for me. But I am so interested on really what they have in the Vatican because I know they got to be holding something like really serious. But why? Why would they hold that information from us? That's a good question. I really would like to know, is it because they do not think we can handle the truth? Or do you, they think that the truth is so powerful that it would just drive us insane? I would love to know that question. Animals don't use a cell phone. Will I be loved? Will I be fed? Will I have a warm place to sleep? They're minimalists, but they still have intact their higher senses, which are much more refined than ours. Look at that dog can hear things you and I can't hear. A dog knows when you're leaving your workplace at 5 or 5.30, whatever your routine is, the dog knows when you leave work and get in your truck or car and you're homeward bound. He knows. He already knows that. He's aware of that because he can sense it. There is no space-time. He can get into that state where he's not limited by the three dimensions that we're bounded by with our five senses, because his senses are much more acute, much higher. He works on instinct more, and instinct in the end cannot be deceived. You can't tell lies to the dog. They know. They know when you genuinely love them, and they also know when there's a dog hater in their presence. 
They know that immediately. We're not even aware. Why is that dog going crazy when you come near him? Well, he senses something in you. It's not nice. My dog, Bruce, knows when I'm going to be coming home, and he knows when my wife is about to come home from work. Dogs are pretty incredible that way. They do have a great sense of time. I don't know how they know so much. My wife works odd schedules being a hairstylist. When she's on her way home, my dog knows. He's very prepared. He's ready to greet that individual that comes through the door. And it's a more random schedule, but yet they know when that person's coming home. It's pretty crazy. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 24% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel, while 76% of the viewers that watch this are not subscribed, but keep coming back for more content. So to the 24% that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. And to the 76 that are not subscribed, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thanks for watching. People can't go to sleep without cutting the TV off because they need radiation to soothe them. Mm. People can't go to sleep without cutting these ultraviolet lights off, these all these synthetic lights, because they need radiation to soothe them. People can't go to sleep without listening to a fan because we so addicted to radiation because the melanin content of our body is already radioactive. Mm. So instead of getting that addiction from the sun, we get it from all this synthetic artificial environment. Now, and that's the reason why we can't sleep. You said some super key there when you talk about the ultraviolet radiation and stuff that we get from the blue light. Uh, you know, our bodies have a direct effect, of course. Everything emits violet, everything emits radiation. Everything. Right. But it has an effect on your body and your bloodstream. Yeah, facts. You understand me? Because, you know, the water in your body is connected to the radiation. Yeah. You understand me? It brings consciousness to the unseen. So now we're talking about beyond exactly. our senses. So now when we're moving in an environment and we detect things that, you know, we feel because yeah. that feeling, we think of it only from like this abstract emotional sense. Yeah. You know, but we don't think of it that these are real detectors that let us know what's happening in our environment. And a lot of it is through your skin. It's called yeah. skin receptors. Uh, one of them is called the Merkel's disc. So inside your skin, remember I was saying about embryology, you have the endoderm, the ectoderm, and the mesoderm. Uh, well, your skin is made from the same uh, uh, cells as your brain and your nervous system. And that's where hair is for. Hair is an extension of your nervous system. Hair is also a eliminating organ too. Yeah. It's an eliminating organ. It's a limitative, but it's most definitely a sense. These yeah, antennas... I talked about this with Mike Rashid on how the warriors grow their hair because those are antennas of intuition. Samsung and his locks you in the Bible. Yeah. And this actually is... So how you... So basically, the, the body scans the environment by way of the hair. You got hair on the outside of your body and you have hair on the inside of your body. And through these, micro, you got Merkel discs, you have uh, weathery uh, sensory, uh, sensory discs that shows the temperature, how to regulate your temperature through your thyroid. That's how you get goosebumps or the hair stand up on you. Like, even though our eyes and our ears is not hearing, you still have your skin, which is the true six and seven sense. That, 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 is, that is very familiar with everything that's going, around, uh, that's going around you. So if you look at it from a scientific point, they say that we are looking at the universe through a, a, a peephole. So you looking, you only going to see what that peephole allow you to see. But there's different frequencies and vibrations or what we're going to call CO2 constituents, which is nothing but light and vibration. And, and that's where all things truly exist at. So, you know, for instance, you have something called a dog whistle. You can blow that dog whistle all day. Can we hear it? No, but do it wake up the neighborhood and the dogs right. start barking, barking, showing that there's frequencies that's such on a high sensitive level well, yeah, that at, we're not in tune to no at more. At 19 hertz, you understand me, human hearing disappears, like we can't hear below that. You know, that frequency of the beast, right? Yeah. It's a fear frequency, Facts. 19 hertz. 19 hertz. Right? So a lion has it within their roar, Facts. right? But they also put it within movies and things of that nature. Like you might be a grown man watching a scary movie wondering why you're shivering. It's not that you, your heart fears it, yeah. it's that it's literally sending a, a frequency. Yeah. That's an, they call it the ghost frequency yeah. as well. Yeah. Because you can't hear it, but you feel it. Facts. Right? And that's what creates the differentiation between your senses. Like, there's something there, I can't see it, but I feel it. So your body is jumping, trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah. So they entrain that within the frequency of, you know, the movie. So the whole time, you're on a low vibration. You're being fearful. Fear. False of evidence, evidence and, appearing real. And then um, there's a frequency of the birds. I forget what yeah. the actual hertz is, but it's way higher. Yeah. Right? In tune with the brain. And it healed tinnitus. Facts. You understand me? Ringing in the ear. Facts. So I thought about that because, you know, we in the belly of the beast that's built off fear. This country is built off fear. This marketing built off fear. Everything is built off Everything. fear. 
if I can keep you on that fear frequency, I can control you. Yeah, facts. But if you ever, you know, ascend more so to the height, you understand me, beyond that beast frequency to the birds, you understand me, and to the higher self, then that's when you can heal and that's when you live above it. So what about the language of the birds? And, yeah, the and language I, of the birds. And that's I talk about point. this a lot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Getting to the language of the birds. And, you know, one of the good ways to do that is starting at the table, eating high frequency foods. Food that grows highest, closest towards the sun. This is pretty interesting, and I kind of agree with a lot of things that this individual says, but he lost me at taking the fan out of my room. Because, honestly, I love having a fan in my room. Not because I like the noise. It just keeps me cool all year long. And I, that poor fan just keeps running. It's running right now. Like, that thing has been running for a lot of years. So don't take my fan away. I don't have a TV in my bedroom. I don't have any of that stuff. Maybe a phone. But my fan, it's staying. I hope you're listening. Look at Exodus 20, 4 through 6. It says, You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For the I, the Lord God, am a jealous God. Okay, so... Nature to become... Do you know the fact that people worship the image of Jesus Christ or the cross with Jesus on it goes directly against what God told us to do? This is all for my Christians out there. I hope you're listening. Look at Exodus 20, 4 through 6. It says, You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for the I the Lord God am a jealous God okay so a graven image is an image carved from stone wood or metal it could be a statue of a person or animal or a relief carving on a wall or pole or how about Leviticus 26 1 that states do not make idols for yourself you shall not erect a carved image or a sacred stone for yourselves nor shall you set up a carved stone for worship in your land I for I a for I the Lord am your God these are considered graven images. Graven image, graven image, graven image. These are graven images. These are graven images. One, Yehoshua, which is what the man's real name was, okay, did not look like this. So what has happened is that things have been created, okay, made of wood and stone and carved in the likeness of a human. Okay, and we have worshipped the graven image of who we believe to be as Jesus, not even realizing that one, his name was never Jesus. Okay, it was changed through transliteration, but he was born as Yehoshua. Okay, and Yehoshua came to teach us of the Christ within. This is why you're not to worship images because it's not about the physical matter for which you're supposed to be coming to. It's about the spirit. It's about the understanding. It's about the involvement. It's about what life really is. What it means to be Christed, to live in the system of the creator and the image of the creator and the creation. So we have been worshiping the physical world. No wonder why we have an elite. We have been worshiping graven images. No wonder why such hardship has downfall upon, a, upon us. Like literally, how many of you who call yourself Christian worship that image? Who have a picture of Jesus on your wall, especially the white Jesus, when that's not even true? Have to think about this, people. He came from like you know, the Middle Eastern, right? What color are they? Not white. You have been worshiping false idols, waiting for this false idol to come into your life to save you, that when that's not even what Yehoshua came to teach us. Yeshua came to teach us about Christ. How to love thy neighbor, how to unite, how to come together. Do remember, it is the Jewish people who who put him to death. Who took? They couldn't do it, so they took him to the Romans. The Romans put him to death. Okay, but the Jewish wanted to do it because he was he was challenging their authority. That's plain and simple. That's it. Okay, I mean he was a Jew. But at the same time, he was also equal with everybody. He did not separate himself among the people. He was with them one. Yeshua was with them one, all of them, okay? So these images that we have on our wall in our churches are graven images, and God told us not to worship them. Are you going to continue to do it even though God told you not to? Are you going to continue to think that's the picture of Jesus, that white man you see? Who are you waiting for? Because Yehoshua, Yeshua, came to teach us of the Spirit to come. The second coming of Christ is not the second coming of a single man. It's the second coming of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and that's falling on many. So before you go worshiping that cross with Jesus on it, just know. 
God told us not to. Now, take that back to your church and ask them why they do. And point out what I have given you. Because God is not coming as a single white man, no. God is coming through all. Because we are in the image and the creation of the Creator. And as we awaken, we realize this. And what do we do? We stop doing the old ways. We shift things, the tumbling down. This is the apocalypse, the apocalypse and times. It's not a total destruction. It's a shifting of power. It's a shifting of understanding. Because when you wake up to the truth of reality, you shift your energy vibrational frequency. When you sh shift your frequency, you change your whole reality outside of you because you're powerful and you don't even know it. But you wouldn't know it because you keep worshiping the graven images they tell you to worship, not realizing that Christ that's within you so I'm gonna leave you with that I love you just remember God has a purpose for your life in everything that happens I have always wondered this as well I've seen it time and time again where people have cross on their neck and pictures of Jesus if you will and I've always wondered if that was okay because we're not supposed to idolize that type of material according to the Bible at least that's also what I was told odd that people really believed in Christianity, but yet still worshipped and idolized those kind of items. So to whoever's out there that has a religious aspect and a view on religion, can you explain to me if it is okay to wear a cross and have an image of Jesus, or is it not okay? Because I've personally always thought it not to be okay. Not that I do not respect Jesus if he was a real individual, it's just I feel like it's kind of taboo to have a item of his downfall you know that that always made me feel uncomfortable but let me know in the comments on your thoughts of this or if you are a cross bearer yourself if you have a cross necklace or a cross in your home things like that uh because i am curious about it very much so i heard a crazy story about you i won't name drop the person but he told me you were in las vegas once you went out in the desert and you were able to summon rain how are you able to do that? We all are able to do that when you are open to many things. It's just that our culture closes so much that we barely understand the power that we have. And when you summon something, it's not because you think that that something is outside of you. It's because you become it. You become the rain. You become the storm. I allow myself to become nature, to become everything. I'm not necessarily sure if I believe this individual. I've seen a lot of people on TikTok act as if they are conjuring rain themselves by doing either rain dances or seances, things like that. And it just makes me wonder, are they just checking the weather beforehand and it's just perfect timing? Or do these guys really have a gift? What if I told y'all that dogs are a failed human experiment and they have souls? There's humans trapped inside of dogs, bro. So I don't know if y'all ever heard about the dog theory. But the theory is, is that these dogs are humans, bro. And they share the same intellect and the same vibration as a human. Now, if you think about it, this dog could have been a police, bro, or a cop back in the day on some reincarnation shit or something, right? Now, y'all must think that I was capping or some shit, right? The dog, commonly known as the Canis lupus, right? Surprisingly, the genetic code with humans is about 84%, bro. You ever think about why some of these dogs have human-like hair? Look, a cat couldn't rescue a dog like that, but the dog's trying to rescue that dog like it's a human. Look at the difference between the cat and the dog in the eyes, bro. Those are human eyes, bro. Y'all remember all dogs go to heaven? You can only go to heaven with a soul. Wake up! Honestly, I didn't know that people considered dogs not having souls. I would figure that almost any creature probably has a soul if I was to guess. Especially dogs. I mean, they're very personable. They have a great personality, some of them. Some of them are really aggressive. But I've often wondered if reincarnation is a thing, if people do not get reincarnated as pigs, dogs and other house and farm animals because it's a way of punishment and a way of freedom from whatever their past life was let me know what you guys think i personally do believe dogs have souls i think most animals do jesus or yashua what did yashua say when he was on the cross he looked up and he said something 
He made seven quotes. One of them, which was, why has thou forsaken me? Who's he talking to himself? But when you get in the Trinity, that really gets people. And I, and I believe in the Trinity. Okay. In Genesis chapter two, God said, let us make man in our image. Right. I have two arms and two legs and a head. So we're going to make man look like that. I don't believe so. Because in the book of James, it talks about there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. I believe that God is a trinity, and when he made us in his image, he made us a trinity. I have a body, I have a soul, all right, and I have a spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're all one, but he's able for his spirit to be over there and his body over here and his soul here. So if that's the case, then why did the body have to ask the soul what was happening? God in his wisdom knew that Jesus Christ, he was all God, but he was also all man. And he had to succeed as all man. Part of that success as man, Hebrews says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Jesus had to succeed, his humanity part had to succeed in the area of faith in the Father. For him to have faith, God the Father had to put up a curtain at times and say, look, I'm not gonna explain to you why I'm doing this. The way I was explained that phrase way back in the day is basically God put himself in the flesh of man. That, Like a regular human, he was going through all of those emotions, so that's why he quoted that phrase. At least that's what I was told as a kid, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the case. Let me know in the comments down below on your thoughts and theories on as to why he said what he said. But for me, yeah, I'm pretty certain that is probably why it was a, a way to humble himself as a creator. This post is about entities. And not just entities, entities during like mushroom trips and things of that nature. There have been reports that there have been thousands of people that have reported to see mantis beings during these experiences. Thousands. All over the country, all over the world, actually. And not just mantis, I mean a, mul a multitude of different types of entities and beings and aliens, whatever you want to call them, in these spaces and places. And I personally also experienced this uh, during a one special trip in Joshua Tree that blew my mind. It was straight up supernatural. And I, at one point, just a little story time, at one point I, I literally felt like a magnetic like pull around me where I couldn't move at all. Like there was, I couldn't move my head. I was trying to, and it felt like I was like in, you know what I imagine, like on a, like a, like a magnetic, force field that had me stuck in place. And I was just receiving downloads of information that made absolutely no sense to my mind. Absolutely no sense. And my mind was there to receive it because my mind was kind of like freaking out. Um, but in like a beautiful way, because it was so intense and so otherworldly and so impossible that I was like, what is going on? And I am just so curious to hear from you guys. Have you ever experienced entities on these type of experiences? And have you experienced them even if it's not on a trip, right? A trip. Have you seen experiences? I would love, stitch me, tell me. Have you seen them? Because I feel like so many people have talked about ghosts and paranormal things. Like at what point do we just say, yeah, obviously we don't know everything because there's so much stuff that is happening in this magical universe that we can't even comprehend. Hey, I don't condone the use of drugs. Let's get that clear, but I am curious about the side effects. I'm curious about the journey that people go through. So this is more on the lines of the people that have experienced this. Leave a comment down below with your experience. You can be as detailed or as vague as you want. I know there's viewers out there that has their own experience. And I would really like to hear them and what you've witnessed and what you've learned. And all of the things that you've gone through during your trips. Whether it be DMT, shrooms acid, whatever it may be, how it makes you feel, things like that, it really fascinates me. If you talk to yourself quite often, then this video is for you. And you're not crazy. So if you talk to yourself, this is often a sign that you are potentially clear audience or you are connecting with your higher self and spirit guides. Before I go any further, make sure to follow this account for more tips on psychic, ghosts, spooks, paranormal and beyond the veil. Now, Claire audience is the ability to hear messages, potentially spirit messages, outside your head 
or inside your head, which is often a voice, um, or you might just verbally talk out loud to yourself. And you might think, where did that come from? By the way, if that's you, let me know in the comments. Now, signs of Claire audience do vary person to person, but here are some major common signs that you do have this psychic gift. You hear footsteps and noises when there is no one else around. You experience ringing in your ears that is not a medical condition. And this often indicates that there is a spirit guide or a spirit that wishes to make themselves known and communicate with you. You had an imaginary friend as a child. And inspiration and creativity tend to come very naturally to you. I'm not going to lie. I talk to myself all the time. Whether there's someone here, whether there's not someone here, I'm still talking to myself. Kind of the reason why I make these videos, because I'm technically talking to myself right now. And I really enjoy it. It just, it relieves so much information that's in my head out. It just puts it out there. I really enjoy talking to myself, as you can tell. In fact, I edit my videos and I cut a lot out because I can easily, easily have an hour long video of most of it just be me talking. <laughs> so I do talk to myself. I do have ringing in the ears. As far as creativity goes, I'm not that much of a creative person, I don't think. I mean, I have some talents, I guess. I can play some instruments, but I'm not very creative. This is pretty interesting. I don't know if I necessarily believe all of this, but I do talk to myself. How about you guys? Do you guys tend to conversate with yourself more than what you'd think normal people do? 3D is the last stage where the, the vibrations condense into materiality. So we can feel things and things can hurt us when we bang into it. It's the lowest vibration we can get to, but our thoughts are some of the highest vibrations, consciousness, you see. You can't touch it, you can't feel it, you can't see it. It's so far removed from anything physical, 3D, but we forget that. And yet that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to pull down the higher dimensions, the higher frequencies to go into your heart. Get out of your head. Get into your heart. I always say the longest journey you will ever take in your life is about a foot and a half long from your head to your heart. And most people can't do that, can't make that journey. It's only a foot and a half long, but it's not easy. It's, you have to work at it and you have to, you know, some people meditate and there are different approaches you can take. You have to find your own way. My way is I can zoom completely out. And I'm so f into what I'm doing here that I'm in another world. It's my form of meditation. I don't know if I per se have the ability to get out of my head and get into my heart. I feel like I have that ability, especially when he references meditating and just doing something that you really enjoy. It just completely zones you out. I do get into those states, like when I'm making videos or when I'm editing, things like that. I really zone out a lot and I just focus on editing and that really brings me comfort. But I don't know if it's in the same guidelines as this individual is talking about. It's, it's really weird, but I do believe that there is a consciousness from your heart that can be different than from what's in your head, if that makes any sense. Uh, a limited access program means that nobody in Congress has to know about this. The Cons Elite were a counterpoint group within different governmental organizations that were, they were party to satanic ritual being used to make contact with, with these aliens or with these higher entities. And because of their Christian faith, they had the conviction. They saw this taking place and they're like, well, we don't need to be a part of this. This is what the Bible talks about um, in, in the worship of, of, of uh, demons and, and of other gods. And, and especially being, you know, using blood sacrifice and different um, types of, of black magic to be able to accomplish it. Um, so they saw that and they, they didn't want to be a part of it. Um, they also were able to... Uh, tie this back to what Jack Parsons and um, L. Ron Hubbard did in the desert in the late 40s. You've got literally just a group, and maybe a director knows about it, nobody else. It's completely classified, it's top secret, it's, it's under lock and key. But I want to mention something. One of the bombshells that we dropped was that there's a declassified federal document Anyone watching this interview can go find this document. It's on the FBI vault. Okay. Uh, document 6751, it's a document from the 40s. It was written by a prominent member of academia and it was submitted to the FBI. In this document, 
they make a case that entities are not space aliens, but that they're interdimensional or extra-dimensional entities that are crossing over from a plane known as the ethereal plane. Now, we know, uh, as, as researchers of the New Age movement, we know that that is where the ascended masters are supposedly said to be on a mm -hmm. high level. This ethereal plane is very popular well, You know, when you talk to people who astral project, people who channel, mm -hmm. people who remote view, people who want to tap in or go on a trip, an ayahuasca trip, a DMT trip. Now, the federal government had this document in the 40s, and language was used in this document uh, that came right out of the playbook of theosophy. Now, the guy that received this document, this is so crazy. The, the federal agent receives a document, and look, the FBI is constantly bombarded with, with you know, phone calls and letters and emails, and you know, they just can't, they can't deal with all of the propaganda from, from citizens. You know, people make stuff up, and, and it's just, it, it's nothing, it's crying wolf. So the FBI has to really be careful what they accept and what they don't. But this was back in the 40s. So the guy that receives a document, he recognizes that this information was received through paranormal means. As a matter of fact, the language used in the 40s was super normal. That's the old way of saying paranormal, super normal. So uh, he says that all of this information was received through super normal means, therefore we need to discount it. It's not valid information. Now that's the headline that he put, it, it's like, like a cover letter. If he really believed that, why did they classify the document? Why did they classify it and then forward it to all of these FBI prominent members at the highest level of security clearance? Why in the world would they classify it and lock it up if they didn't believe it? It wasn't until years later that they declassified document 6751. And, and you know, I read this document and I'm thinking, okay, since the 40s, the federal government at the highest levels have known that these are not space aliens, that these are entities coming from another dimension. I talked to someone who has worked in a deep underground military base, which we have, we've interviewed people. Uh, they talk about different classes of entities. None of that is really mentioned in 6751. It's more so an overall summarization of what's going on. Now, there were some information about traveling through the dimensions. There's some very fascinating you know, tidbits in this document. Uh, and we, we don't really go too deep into the document other than referencing it in the film because we had to go through, you know, we've got over 300 declassified documents in our collection right now, all pertaining to aliens, UFOs, uh, extrasensory perception, psychic activity that they're training people to operate in. The federal government has been training people in the occult since the 40s training them in how to operate in occult magic and occult sciences. Everything our Bible tells us is absolutely forbidden. Our federal government has been a part of this since the 40s. And I want to add, back in the 40s, they still promoted the idea of a Christian nation of America. Yet behind the scenes, it just goes to show that, our, that the people in charge of our government have been pacifying the society. I kind of always have wondered if extraterrestrial was not interdimensional. And it's crazy to think that the CIA, FBI, all of these organizations have had access to it for such a long time. And it makes me also wonder, why do they classify this information and declassify it? Like, why do they just not keep it classified? Why do they have to release this information? Who's to say they're not just faking this information to cause media and drama and things like that? Because to me, if you were an organization, you have the right to withhold that information all you want, even if it's being provided by tax dollar. So it just always makes me curious. Why do they release that type of information and not expect people? people to question it and not understand it because it's against our norms, you know? If you don't see me, they killed me. Um, I did not commit suicide. Um, I'm uh, kind of uh, freaking out right now um, because um, I went on the dark web and of course I'm safe, but I leaked the classified information I wasn't supposed to. So, you guys all remember how back in the late 2000s, uh, the, the, you realize back in the 50s how the electricity was getting super advanced, like the electronics were getting super advanced. Well, in the 1947 was the Roswell, New Mexico uh, UFO crash. Well, they uncovered two uh, flying saucers. Um, there was a total of 27 bodies from the classified report on the dark web, and all of them were dead. There was females, there was children, ETs, and everything. There was five survivors um, of ETs, extraterrestrials. There was, um, there's one female ET, 
and there was one, and one boy. The female one had 12 toes, 12 fingers, and I have a classified video, and it has big gash marks in its leg from the crash. And, um, I shouldn't have stole this stuff, but I did. Uh, we need to know, and it's not right. And, um, I gotta keep this quiet, because I don't know what's gonna happen to me if I... If I keep talking about this, but, um... So the peak of the, the electronic era was in the 50s, and the crash of the... The most famous crash site was in 1947, as you know, Roswell, New Mexico, the UFO crash. Um, back in the 50s, President Eisenhower signed a treaty with an extraterrestrial civilization, and it was the ones that crashed into the UFO Roswell, New Mexico crash site. You may ask, how do I know this? How am I fucking correct? And why, if I'm crazy, I might be crazy from what I read. Um, you would be too. Um, I got on Tor Browser, got on a VPN, uh, Everything got on government classified files. I paid Bitcoin for them, and yeah, I did some stuff I'm not too proud of. I broke a fucking federal fence, but um, they're they're hiding fucking stuff and they're killing people. They're they're those kids that go missing. All the children that go missing are not kidnappers. I mean, small portion maybe. Um, but from the classified files I read. There's a base in New Mexico, or Dulce, New Mexico, and it's underground. It spans two miles wide and two miles down. You may think that's impossible. They're studying on humans down there. I'm not fucking joking, okay? I'm going crazy right now. I just read, like, hundreds of pages of classified information, and they're studying on humans that they abduct, and they're certain blood type, obviously, and most of them are either Native American or Hispanic. Um, they're either uh, darker skinned. And I hate to say that because I have a black girlfriend who may think I'm kind of racist. I'm not. Um, that's fucking... It's weird. I don't know why. But um, there was a treaty that Eisenhower signed that said in the classified documents that the extraterrestrials that survived at Roswell said, if we can have 150,000 of your people, then you can have advanced technology from us. The peak of the technology era was in the 1950s. 1950s. That's like freaking Eisenhower's era. So this classified information I was reading on the dark web, there's a lot of fake stuff on the dark web, like fake classified information, but this stuff was too fucking real. Um, it's stuff I shouldn't have fucking seen. And there was, there was stuff I was, there was fucking, I have so much proof of work underground uh, bunker locations that stretches to uh, this place called Roswell, New Mexico, to Dulce, to Los Alamos, to Montana, to like hundreds of different areas. They're all underground and they, they're testing on people. I don't fucking know what, what, I'm just, I seen some very fucking weird pictures I shouldn't have seen. Um, I've seen pictures of um, kids being tested on um, with people in hazmat suits in bunkers. I've seen uh, gas chambers. Uh, I don't know if they were flaming chambers or gas. I couldn't tell. But from what I know is most of the people that are going missing is indigenous. And you guys know that there's the government does nothing about it, right? Coincident or not. Is my classified shit I found on the dark web true? I mean, think about it. Bob Lazar, because I'm a huge UFO guy, so that's why I find the information. Bob Lazar was saying back in the 80s that he he worked at Area 51. Everybody thought he was a joke, but we didn't know what Area 51 is because we didn't know what it was. Uh, we never we did we wouldn't have knew what Area 51 was if it wasn't for him. Well, I got the fucking chills because he's the one that was saying that the UFOs. Uh, the extraterrestrial aircrafts have a crystal in the back of them, like a big crystal, and it ru that's how they run, is off crystals. You may think I'm fucking whack, but I don't believe in that old fucking crystal shit, like that energy crystal shit, but I have no choice to now, because I've seen some fucking photos I can't unsee, man. Look at that. I have chills on every single spot of my body. Um... 
We have came in contact with extraterrestrials since 1947, and we're still in contact with them right now. And underground in Dulce, New Mexico, they are cloning people. They are injecting kids, mostly darker-skinned kids, uh, black, uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, like darker ascent people, and they are injecting them with different chemicals to see what would happen. And you and you guys know in the indigenous community, I'm a huge indigenous uh, supporter, so I'm not bashing you guys or doing talking shit. But I came across classified information, and it's saying that all the all the kids that go missing, the women, all that that you see is and how the government does nothing about the indigenous people going missing is and how they're being like taken into drug rehab places and they're not going there that's what they're getting dropped off there after they're being I know too much and I'm going to get killed for what I did I released a bunch of classified information on a forum page um on the dark web, and it's a forum page where hackers can release this to the public. So you're welcome. Um, re keep in mind the peak of the electricity or the uh, the era of the electronics was in the 50s. Uh, the the UFO crush was in the 40s. Eisenhower signed the treaty with extraterrestrials in you know the 50s, and they are killing people. Um, they are trying to make really advanced stuff. And I'm talking stuff I've seen. I've seen classified photos that were not fake. Like legit. Like someone took a picture of the photo of the photo. Like you know what I mean type thing. Like like there's everything. I have everything. Um, I leaked it all. So um, if they find me. Uh, if you see me. Uh, if I'm dead. Uh, I didn't commit suicide, they killed me. I promise you on my life, I would not kill myself. Um, I'm getting engaged to my girlfriend. We've been together seven years. I would not end my life. So, if you find that I'm dead, um, they killed me. I released thousands of pages of classified information from the Federal Bureau of Inve Investigation and the CIA. Um, I'm not lying. I obtained them easily and i'm really good at it and i'm gonna hop off tiktok for a while but this video will stay up so people can see it keep sharing this video and i repeat keep fucking sharing this video because i don't know how much time i have left before i have to go again i'm already packing i'm already packing um stay safe guys remember if you see me and then you don't see me. I go missing. They killed me. I did not kill myself. Peace, peace, peace. In a way, I really want to believe this individual. He seems fairly serious, very unprofessional on how he speaks, and it just makes it even more genuine because I really believe this individual probably did go on the dark web and bought documents from somebody using Bitcoin. Whether those are real documents or not, they probably were not. But it's still interesting nonetheless, especially with his sincerity. I really would like to know a little bit more about where he posted those documents at on the web form, even though I really wouldn't go to the dark web. But I would be very curious to read what those documents have to say and show. I would like to know your input on this particular video that we just watched because some people probably will think that this is fake. A lot of people in this individual's comments thinks it's real. This this video right here has over 100,000 likes on it and a lot of views. And as far as I can tell, this this is the only video this individual has since he posted this one a week ago. So I am curious to know a little bit more about this individual's backstory, if they are okay or not, because I would like to know if this is real or not. So let me know in the comments your thoughts, your opinions, and if you think this was real, if it was fake, if you know what documents he's even talking about, leave a comment down below letting me know. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you were interested in any of the clips that we watched today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.